Hey Cupcakes, welcome back to my channel. So this is part two to my Credence vlog. So make sure if you haven't checked out part one that you go back and watch part one before you watch this one. So part two picks up, um, it's actually Tiernan's 18th birthday and the boys take her out for like a night on the town. Um, so of course when she's out on the night in the town, it happens to be a night where everyone is out and she runs into Cece and Terrence, I think his name is, or Tears, whatever. Um, and of course they're supposed to be like the true villains of this story. Although it's not exactly clear why Cece and Terrence or whatever his name is don't like the boys, they make it very clear that, you know, they have some kind of beef with them and that they truly don't believe that Tiernan's in the best hands with her staying there all through the winter. And they try to persuade her that these boys don't know what's best for her and they're actually trying to use her. So they actually let Tiernan know like, hey, like, do you think they're just being nice to you for no reason? Like, no, you have money. Like you could literally be Jake's sponsor for his business. They could literally just try to play nice, get you pregnant. And since you're 18, they would literally just keep you here and just use up all of your money. But while we have our own opinions on Jake and his you know, sons and how they're treating Tiernan. It just truly it makes us question Cece and Tiernan also, only because like, it's not clear what their true intentions are. Like Cece, I guess she used to mess with Caleb and she says that he was abusive towards her. But Terrence, like, are you just jealous of the fact that basically they get bitches? Like, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, they're not very clear on why they don't like the boys at all. Now, mind you, it is winter time. So after this whole situation, it actually starts to snow. And you know that the boys have been talking about, like, in the winter time, you can't go anywhere when it snows because it's too much snow. The mountains and everything is just too dangerous. So Tiernan actually has to decide whether or not she's going to want to be locked up with these three or take her chances with Cece and Dum Dum. So... What she decides is she wants to see what it's all about during the winter time, and that's all the boys talk about. However, now, this time being stuck in the house during winter time is not going to be the same as their usual. Um, they've never been stuck in the house with a female in there. So with Tiernan in there, it kind of makes things a little bit more difficult for them. And also, this is where the book like takes a turn, which I think we all knew leading up to it that winter time is when all the shenanigans were happening. But truly, this is when all the shenanigans is happening. Now, no spoilers because I don't want to actually speak about what happens. But basically, Jake stops Tiernan that night. So the same night as the whole debacle with Cece and whatchamacallit. They then go home and start to watch a movie. And Jake stops Tiernan from losing her V-car to his sons. Yes, both of them. And you start to wonder Jake's true intentions. Did he stop them because he's jealous? Or did he stop them because he wants better for her first time? I will put a spoiler warning like somewhere up here. I mean, some of you have already read this book. Some of you are not going to read this book. Um, so proceed if you would like. Um, however, it truly starts to make me question Jake. Like this, this whole scenario after this point makes me question Jake and his true intentions um and for me like my interpretation of him is he's like strictly just being selfish he seems like he wants Tiernan basically all to himself and he's truly lost the whole purpose of her being here for me now although he did stop his own boys from messing with Tiernan you know he doesn't have shame for how he feels about Tiernan himself. And he lets her know, you know, a few scenes later, that he's gonna be tempted all winter time by having her around. Like, sir, although you didn't have the best relationship with her father, this is still like your niece. And it's just, I don't know, like, it's just so odd to me. Like, the whole situation, the whole scenario, like, 
Jake is something else. I tell you, Jake is something else. Like, he's my least favorite character in this whole book. So, when they get back to the cabin, although it's not like, like they're not speaking out to the world what they just did, no and Caleb already know. So, they confront their father and they're like, how are you going to do that when we saw her first? Like, we were trying to get with her first. And you just go ahead and do the little sneaky sneak and just get her for yourself. Like, and honestly, like, it's still weird, but she is closer to their age and stuff like that. So, like, the whole situation is just odd. And they're kind of, like, at odds at each other a little bit over basically the possession of Tiernan. So, like, this is where it gets crazy for me. Because in one instance, it was like that Jake cared about Tiernan and what she was doing, how she was doing it her first experience whatever and to me the boys are acting like it's some weird kind of competition um but also like jake doesn't even fight for her that's how you know he doesn't even really care about whether he sleeps with her or what he does with her or whatever because he lets noah know because noah's like you know i actually have feelings for her and think about her and all these things and he's like look if you you can still try to get with her if you want to like that's jake's whole interpretation of it is like noah if you can try if you want to. Like, that's fine. Like, you can try to get with her. What? Negative 10 is a father. Negative 10 is a girl. So now that we is... know what Jake thinks, we know Noah has some kind of families with Tiernan. And honestly, he's like number one in my book. Like, I really like him for some odd reason. Um, Caleb, we don't know what he thinks because he ain't said a damn thing this whole damn time. Tiernan, in her mind, she loves being around Jake. She loves the fact that he likes her being around. You know, there's just something in her that's enjoying his company. But also, like, she keeps comparing him to her parents. And I don't know if that's because he is her guardian at this moment. But she keeps going back to that he's not like her parents and that he actually wants her around. Which is true. But what are his intentions for wanting her around? So, at this point in the book, you know, Tiernan's noticing a few differences now that she has messed with Jake. She notices that Noah, while he's still being sweet, he's a little bit more distant. Um, and she can tell that Caleb is just, like, strictly angry with her. Like, hey, Caleb ain't having it, boy. I mean, he be having just an attitude, be giving her the side eye. Like, he is not having it. He is mad that she didn't sleep with his daddy. And you know what, Caleb? You should be mad. Give her some grunts to really express why you're angry. Um, but yeah, at this point, we're 61% in, and I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. This book is wild. So we're going to keep reading, and then I'll update you at the next whatever point I feel like I should update you. Hey cupcakes. So I, I basically basically look the same. Uh, different day though. Um, so we're going to run a few errands. I need to go into the hair store and then we're going to talk more about Credence. I'm about 61% in, uh, which isn't too far from where I was yesterday, but we got some stuff to talk about. So we got our hair dye. I'm going to be dyeing some hair later. <laughs> you all will not see that. It's going to be messy. Mm -hmm. uh, but 61% in, we are having a conversation with Noah and Tiernan. And Noah, you know, sees how Tiernan is reacting to how Caleb is treating her. And he wants to let her know it's not personal, but that he does have trust issues when it comes to women just like his dad does. Which is very interesting that Noah brings that up because jake kind of really hasn't said that himself but he kind of alludes to not having much time and experience with women this late in his life he also makes a point to make sure to say that he feels like Tiernan's only sleeping with jake because her own dad didn't love her and how she wants to take advantage of the situation and make sure that jake doesn't forget about her and trying to force jake to have that connection with her and you know, she's taking advantage of the fact that she has his attention and she's trying to keep it in any way possible, which kind of makes sense. Um, 
but I truly don't know if it's that or if both of them are kind of using each other in some kind of way. What I love about this part of the book is this, to me, it seems like the first time, mind you, we're 61% in, this is like the first time that we're actually seeing a connection between two characters that isn't lust. Like, it's not lust-worthy. It's not some kind of sexual feeling or anything like that. It's just genuine connection of two people having a conversation that is relatable to each other. And we find out more about Noah and that Noah, you know, relates to Tiernan into the fact that he too feels, you know, like nobody pays attention to him or talks to him because Caleb doesn't talk and Jake is always busy and doesn't really pay attention to Noah as much as probably he does Caleb because he always has to watch out for Caleb. To me, like, this is my favorite part of the book so far and I'm definitely still rooting for Noah. Out of the three, Jake, Caleb, and um, Noah, I truly feel like Noah's like the best fit for her even though it's still weird. They're still like step cousins. I don't know. That aside, Noah genuinely likes her. He genuinely, you know, is paying attention to her. You know, he's clearly trying to make that connection with her. Jake is way too old for her. And Caleb, I don't really know how to feel about him. Um, but I'm rooting for Caleb. So, I, Caleb. I mean, I am rooting for Caleb. Can you say something? Like, can you say something at some point in this book? But I'm rooting for Noah. And we're going to see how it all pans out and see where their connection goes from here. Alright y'all, I look a little bit crazy because my allergies are driving me insane, but I had to come to you and give you an update since we're 80% in and I'm starting to really see a shift in terms of the dynamics of the characters and what's going on in the story so far. As we get, you know, further into the book, I have like 20% left. I'm starting to realize like Tiernan is very selfish and I don't fault her for being completely selfish. Um, I do understand that, you know, she comes from a home where she wasn't able to socially, emotionally, and all of those things be herself and express herself because of the way she was brought up. She was a celebrity uh, child. And the fact, you know, her parents weren't the most willing in terms of parenting her you know, dealing with her, socializing with her, anything. You're coming from a household where you weren't able to do those things as many children would be able to do those things and be able to learn, you know, how to socialize with people and how to interact with people and how to deal with their emotions. Like she hasn't been able to do any of that. And then she's coming into this new home where she is able to do those things. However, she's now doing those things with these three men that have their own issues and you know have their own conflicts and they're now you know all four of them are building these relationships and trying to make each other happy and trying to please each other trying to get each other's attention however they're creating new conflicts within the home you know when it comes to jake noah and even caleb you know they're sitting there trying to figure out how to gain Tiernan's attention. What does she need? What does she want? You know, all of these things. And she's sitting there also trying to figure out what does she need? What does she want? Like all of these different emotions. And as we continue in this book, you know, the author does a great job at giving us insight into what Caleb's head, like his emotions, like he can't talk but he still has feelings and she gives us, you know, a way to see that Tiernan honestly isn't really thinking about how she's impacting them. She's just worried about feeding them sexually, basically. Not to say that she's doing it on purpose. I do think that there is some immaturity. Um, I think that she does care for each of them in different ways. 
she flops back and forth of who she wants. Like, at first she wanted Jake. And then she's like, oh, but I really should be with Noah. But, uh, but Caleb, like, so she keeps flipping back and forth. But she's not even thinking about how this is affecting them. Like, they're seeing her flirt with each one, do things with each one, kiss, with, like, each one. Like, you're driving them literally crazy. And it's not fair to anybody in this whole situation. And Caleb eventually, like, loses it. I'm going to keep reading. Uh, <sighs> this is crazy. I don't feel bad for Jake. He is my least favorite character. <laughs> if you've read this book, you're going to have to let me know who your favorite and least favorite is. Like, I'm going back and forth between knowing Caleb. I think Noah's still number one. But Caleb, like, you know, he's been through some things. And this last chapter kind of like made me feel for him like this book is good at making you feel things whether it's uncomfortable things or emotions or whatever so so i'm gonna keep reading i really want to finish this book um this author does a great job at like pulling different emotions out of you whether it's like uncomfortable emotions crazy emotions like just a ball of emotions from like reading like and you're gonna have to let me know in the comments if you've read this book who your favorite character was who your least favorite character was I can't stand Jake I think he is almost pointless <laughs> like he's not pointless but like irrelevant in this moment in time like you're not even a factor it's all about Noah and Caleb <laughs> Hey y'all, so as you probably just saw like the little b-roll, I did go to see the Barbie movie and I didn't get to record much because I was with my cheerleaders, but I wanted to show you my outfit. Um, so this old bow is just a bow that I got at like CVS or Walgreens back in the day, I don't know. Um, this Barbie is like a tank crop, is from Target, so cute, like I had to wear it jean jacket from forever 21 airy flare leggings don't mind my dirty mirror um these <laughs> vans are so cute they have cupcakes on them they're so old though i got them years ago and then i wore my pink cake spade and my pink little flamingo from bath and body works and with so, that we have finished credence finally so honestly, I cannot believe that I finished this book. I typically struggle with really long books, but I will say, you know, with this being my first Penelope Douglas book, she did a really good job at making you want to continue reading, making you want to figure out the characters, want making you want to read more into this world that is just like wild and crazy, obviously is not realistic. And she just makes you so intrigued of what's going to happen next. Um, I think maybe for some people, like I saw in some reviews that it was a quick read for them. It was a little heavy for me. <laughs> I need to start doing research on what y'all got me reading. Because I just saw that people enjoyed it and I picked it up. <laughs> Carla wanted to join me apparently. <laughs> Uh, but this book, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It is a dark romance, so it's not going to be for everybody. You know, dark romance is a genre that, you know, is supposed to be fantasy. It's completely out of the realm of the normal. And, you know, this book does have dubious consent. It does have, you know, some, uh, you know, incestual things. And while it makes you cringy, like, this author does what dark romance is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable at times. It's supposed to make you want to continue reading the pages because it's so out of the norm. It's supposed to make you feel all types of emotions. So with that, like Penelope Douglas completely knocked it out of the park. I will say where she lost me. <laughs> uh, 
the ending and I'm not going to spoil it for you because if you want to read it, I want you to read it. I want you to enjoy it. If you have read it and you want my input on what I think about the ending, leave a comment down below and I will do a separate video, you know, and I'll put that it has spoilers and we can talk about it, whatever. But for me, the ending was a little like, I don't know. I don't know if I just wasn't really paying attention to it reading it uh it just caught me a little off guard on who she ended up with but as I thought about it like when I finished the book I was like you know what it did kind of lead that way and it does kind of make sense ish but it wouldn't be who I would choose for her <laughs> if that makes sense. want more for her like I want more for Tiernan I truly believe that the ending that she got, if you read it, like if you go through all this, you read all of these pages, it's just not satisfying. Like I just felt like, you know, going into this, her and the boys, like there's Jake, he's, nobody cares about him. Her and the boys, like everybody is just so young and I do feel like Tiernan, the maturity and everything happens so quickly for her. I do feel that there was so much for her to explore outside of this, you know, new world that she has created for herself and that they've created for her. And I wanted more for her in the end. You don't have to just end up in this situation just because you're comfortable with these people. And maybe that's just me as a person and maybe that's my feelings coming out that I don't feel like any woman should just settle for whatever man or whatever situation like is convenient for her at that time. And in the end, I felt like she did. Like she literally settled for the person that she felt was the best for her at the time. She didn't get to explore, you know, anything else. Uh, even if, you know, she decided that this experience was an amazing experience and she loves all of these people and she wants to be around these people. Like, they should have wanted more for her because at the end of the day, they wanted more for themselves also. Like, Jake, I think, was content, but I don't really know if the boys were content with. I also want to say, I felt like this could have been a series. There's so much more to say, in my opinion, about Jake, Noah, and Caleb. And I felt like there were not missing pieces, but I wanted more. I wanted to know more about their background, maybe why Caleb the way he, was the way he was, maybe more information on why Jake was the way he was. Like, it just felt like everything was not rushed because I could tell that the author really took her time in panning everything out and all these different things. But I do feel like there could have been more. So maybe breaking it up into three books and possibly giving Tiernan that experience outside of their world. And you know what? If she doesn't like it, like have her come back to it and, you know, have that happen and then tell their story of life after being, you know, in this mountain or whatever. Like, so yeah, I don't know. I overall enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Uh, it did what it's supposed to do. It's a dark romance. So, like, it's a happy ending that shouldn't be a happy ending. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, but I really appreciate all of you for watching. This was a roller coaster ride that I couldn't wait to share with you all. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, drop a tree emoji like the little forest tree the little pine tree emoji because this has pine trees on the cover I'm so excited to uh do my next two videos uh there should be one next saturday and the saturday after my summer ween vlog y'all that's gonna be a time it's it romance is definitely my girl like thrillers <sighs> but anyway Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts were. You know, if you're choosing to read it, if you've already read it, like whatever. And I'll see you for the next video. Bye.